आउज़बिल्लाम बसमीम अल्लाम डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट पार्ट टू ऑफ द लेक्चर नंबर वन एंड पार्ट वन लेक्चर नंबर वन फोकस्ड ऑन द इंट्रोडक्शन टू जो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड इट्स इम्पोर्टेंस सो वी कोर्ड टेल द कोर्स एम्स to soil mechanics what is soil what is soil mechanics we also introduce geotechnical engineering and its role in civil engineering in today's lecture we are going to focus on the history of geotechnical engineering several tests which are performed in the field and lab then we will move towards understanding the importance of geotechnical engineering famous geotechnical failures and a few typical geotechnical questions which needs to be raised in our minds regarding soil soil investigation regarding borings regarding depth of borings what kind of test we need to perform whether we are we should go for the lab test whether we should go for the field tests so that was the focus of the part 1 of the lecture number 1 and here this would be the focus of the part 2 of the lecture number course aims were discussed clos course learning objectives and mapping with the program learning objectives were also discussed in our previous video tentative weekly schedule is shared using the google classroom and here as well we discussed about the soil and soil mechanics what are the different types of soils residual soils and transported soil what are the properties as a geotechnical engineer we are interested in for example origin grain size distribution ability to drain water hydraulic conductivity compressibility shear strength load bearing capacity we also discussed about the soil mechanics rock mechanics soils engineering and rock engineering so if you don't remember please kindly watch our previous video or the part 1 of the lecture number 1 then we talked about the geotechnical engineering which is a sub discipline in which we deal with the design of foundations which will be studied in the foundation engineering training structures which will be studied and discussed in geotechnical engineering 2 and similarly earth structures embankments dams and these are the structures in which the knowledge and understanding of the geotechnical engineering is important then we try to demonstrate that there are several branches in engineering and in civil engineering where the knowledge understanding of the geotechnical engineering is important for example earthquake engineering water resource engineering you take the transportation engineering if you are taking the structural engineering geology mechanical engineering environmental engineering construction engineering so these are the different fields areas where the knowledge and understanding of the geotechnical engineering concepts is important now in today's lecture we are going to first start with the history of geotechnical engineering first we'll go and we will start with the geotechnical engineering prior to 18th century then we will study that what kind of concepts what kind of theories were developing in from 1700 to 1776 AD and that is known as pre classical era in geotech engineering 
classical soil mechanics phase one classical soil mechanics phase two modern soil mechanics and then we will talk about the birth of geotechnical engineering from 1927 till present let's start with the technical engineering prior to the 18th century now as we all know that ancient civilizations flourished along the banks of rivers such as Nile is present in Egypt, Tigris and Euphrates, Mesopotamia which is located in between Iraq, Syria, Huanghu which is located in China. So dikes were built for the protection of town of Mohenjo-daro which is located in Pakistan and those dikes were used for the protection of the town and for the irrigation purposes by the Chan dynasty in China. Ancient Greek civilization used isolated pad footings, strip foundations, raft foundations for building different types of structures. Egyptian built pyramids which posed formidable challenges regarding foundations, stability of slopes and construction of underground chambers. Pagodas were built during Eastern Han Dynasty with the arrival of Buddhism in China. Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy is one of the most famous examples of problems related to soil bearing capacity and I would say settlement as well. You can watch a case study video which is prepared on our YouTube channel related to the Leaning Tower of Pisa and how it settled and how much it settled and how they try to reduce the settlement of that particular place. Now in the pre-classical era from 1700 to 1776 AD, this period concentrated on studies related to natural slope, unit weights, various soils, semi-empirical earth pressure theories were developing in that particular pre-classical era theory for lateral earth pressure on retaining walls, soil classification were done, unit weights based upon the unit weights and model tests on retaining walls were conducted. For example, if we are having a retaining wall here, and the backfill material is present, are placed here so this backfill material try to exert lateral pressure lateral force and that is known as active when the retaining wall is in active state for example the training body is moving away from the backfill so the soil is in active condition and it will fail along a slip surface and if the material backfill material is present or the soil is present on the left side of this retaining wall this will also give or apply a lateral force or lateral stress on or lateral pressure on it which will stabilize the retaining wall so these are the topics which will be covered in geotech 2 in greater detail so those concepts were building up in pre-classical era and then in classical soil mechanics phase one a French scientist, Coulomb, 
determine the true position of the sliding surface in soil behind a retaining wall. Coulomb also used the laws of friction and cohesion for solid bodies. And Francis and Navier studied the special cases of Coulomb's work related to inclined backfills. So Coulomb was working on finding the slip surface or the sliding surface that along this surface the failure will occur or the retaining wall will fail. So Francis in Navier he extended the concept from the level ground surface to the inclined sloping surface having angle beta and you find out this slip surface or the failure surface or the slip plane in classical soil mechanics phase 2 several experimental results related to laboratory test on sand were developed permeability of sand filters were investigated by Darcy and Bosinus proposed the theory of stress distribution under loaded bearing areas in a homogeneous semi-infinite elastic and isotropic medium. So for example, if we are having a surface loading, it posed the stress distribution beneath that footing that just beneath the footing we are having greater stress distribution and as we go away from the footing the stresses will reduce or it will decrease Reynolds demonstrated the phenomenon of dilatancy now that is a topic which will be covered in Geotech 2 But I'll give you a definition here that dilatancy is the volumetric change which is observed in granular materials when they are subjected to shear deformation. So we are shearing when you are shearing a specimen, and particularly a dense specimen. If you are running a direct shear test. And when you are shearing it and if they are densely packed they, they due to the dense packing and irregular shape it, shapes of these particles these particles try to expand or dilate during shearing in uh, modern soil mechanics from 1910 till 1927 AD, Etterberg focused on studying the consistency of soil, which is related to the liquid limit, plastic limit, and shrinkage limit or shrinkage properties, liquid limit properties, plastic limit properties. Frontard focused on developing double shear tests bell focused on studying the lateral pressures and resistance of clays the capacity of clays shear box test and Fidinus developed in 1918 slip circle analysis of saturated clay slopes called Tirzavi studied the theory of conservation for clays which will be studied in Geotech 2. Now the birth of geotechnical engineering occurred in 1927 till present when Terzaghi gave the concepts of 1925 
after that the geotechnical engineering which we discuss we study that changed significantly and based upon the contribution uh, due to the contribution of the Karl Terzaghi related to consultation and the effective stress concepts which are used for understanding the behavior of soils and settlement of clays and failure due to piping in sand under dams he is known as the father of soil mechanics so those were Karl Terzaghi's contribution the another contribution he did to the engineering that he arranged the first conference of the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering which was held at Harvard University in 1936. It was through the inspiration and guidance of Tezaghi over the preceding quarter century that papers were brought to that conference covering a wide range of topics such as shear strength, effective stresses, in situ testing means that field test testing concepts were also brought in this conference that how you can find out the shear strength of the soil how you can find out the settlement of the soil in the field Dutch corn penetrometer centrifuge testing consolidation settlement concepts elastic stress distribution preloading for soil improvement frost action that how frost or freezing and thawing action will change the engineering properties of different types of soils expensive clays arching theory of earth pressure soil dynamics and earthquakes these topics were brought into this conference now that was related to the history of geotechnical engineering and how it developed now there are in situ tests which we might be studying in greater detail at the end of this course. There are several in situ tests to find the engineering properties of soils. For example, standard penetration test, cone penetration test, plate load test, pile load test, flat dilatometer test, and vein shear test. Now, standard penetration test, we usually get a standard penetration number, and that number is obtained by hammering a tube rod into the soil and getting the resistance to that penetration of that tube or that rod and we can correlate that with the strength void ratio relative density unit weight velocity lots of other geotechnical parameters in cone penetration testing we get the tip resistance and sleeve fraction in plate load test that is used for design of shallow foundations pile load test that is used for the design of deep foundation flat dilatometer test is used to find out the small strain stiffness behavior of the soils and vein shear test is used for finding very soft for finding the shear strength of the very soft clays so this is the setup in which we perform standard penetration test. This is the setup in which, which can be used to perform the cone penetration test where you get the tip resistance and the sleeve fraction along this cone which is penetrated into the soil. So TPT rig is used. To drive this cone into the soil and getting the information about the pore water pressure, water table, the tip resistance, and the sleeve fraction, which can be used and can be related to various engineering properties of the soil. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, plate load test is used for the design of shallow foundations. So you dig a hole where you place a plate in here, and then you place a hydraulic jack. Dial gauges are placed, sandbags are placed on top of this steel joist 
and that load is applied onto the hydraulic jack and onto this plate and you can get the load settlement or deformation behavior similarly if you are performing this test on the pile you can get the load deformation curve from pile load test as well which can give you an idea about the strength of the soil bearing capacity of the soil settlement of the soil and as I mentioned earlier on that for soft clays sometimes it's very difficult to perform standard penetration test or even cone penetration test so in those cases you can use the wind shear test to find out the shear strength of those clays for example marine clays are marshy soil strength can be find out using the when shear test now if you are interested to find out the small strain stiffness So you can use a flat dilatometer in which this part is inflated and that inflated balloon will try to exert some pressure into the soil here you can see that as well so it's a flat dilatometer and by applying those pressures we can find out the small strain stiffness behavior of that particular soil in situ or in the field there are various laboratory tests which you are going to perform in geotechnical engineering one lab course and in geotechnical engineering two lab course for example in geotechnical engineering one you will perform the moisture content of the soil specific gravity of the soil liquid limit plastic limit plasticity index shrinkage limit sieve analysis to get the particle size distribution of the coarser soils hydrometer analysis which is performed to get the particle size distribution of the finer soils proctor test and modified proctor test will be performed to find out the unit weights and optimum moisture content of the soil which is related to the compaction chapter which will be discussed in greater detail direct shear test is also performed to find out the cohesion and friction angle or the shear strength parameters and confined compression test to get the shear strength of the clays triaxial test which is also performed to find out the shear strength parameters controlling the consolidation test or sometimes it's also known as odometer test Now, those were the tests in geotechnical engineering which were performed in laboratory. Now, what is the importance of geotechnical engineering? Why we perform in situ tests, why we perform lab tests? So, civil engineer has many diverse important encounters with the soil fee applications of the geotechnical engineering. Is foundation design, pavement design, design of earth chaining structures and underground tunnels, embankments, excavations, design of earthen dams. So we need to know the strength, 
settlement generally say compressibility hydraulic conductivity properties of the soil starting with the strength and compressibility so foundation is a very important element of all civil engineering structures and all civil engineering structures like buildings dams bridges retaining walls walls canals tunnels pillars are founded in or on the surface of the earth it is necessary to understand the bearing capacity of the soil so if the superstructure is applying a load onto the soil the effect of ground water and vibration is also important so what is the bearing capacity of this particular soil or we can relate that to what is the strength of this soil what is the compressibility of this soil what is the hydraulic conductivity of this particular soil whether this load can be taken by this particular soil or not now the question arises whether to use strap footing a type of shallow foundation which will be discussed in foundation engineering or concrete pile or reinforced concrete pile which is a type of deep foundation now we can see here that we are only having a one story room so if the strength is sufficient or we can say that if the bearing capacity is enough because the load is not that much which is exerted onto this particular soil so we can go for the shallow foundation if these are the examples of the shallow foundations which you usually see around when you are observing a construction going on if the soil is good enough then you can go for the combined footing or single footing if we are having a loose or weak soil or the soil having low bearing capacity then you can go for the deep foundation options for example piles similarly if you are constructing in offshore environment so we need to use the piles or a number of piles in order to reach to that bedrock or firm stratum having sufficient bearing capacity which is the focus in foundation engineering now if you are going for the deep foundation options so first of all we need to conduct the boring we need to create a hole in the soil and then we need to place the cage steel cage is placed and then we pour the concrete into it so that a pile is constructed and after that we can construct a superstructure if the soil is weak still the deep foundations on the pile will provide sufficient bearing capacity based upon the tip resistance and sleeve fraction or the skin fraction you can also install helical piles into that particular soil and then we can place or we can construct a house on it similarly if we are designing a 
pavement. For example, here are different layers of the road, sub-base, base course or surface course. So that is placed onto the soil or made from the soil. Whether it's flexible or rigid pavement, its performance depends upon the subsoil on which it rests, the thickness of the pavement and its component parts depends upon certain characteristics, for example, modulus of rupture, California bearing ratio, unit weights, frequency of the loads or the cars which are passed onto that particular pavement, types of truck axle loads which should be determined before the design is made. But the information about the different types of soil, particles, compaction of the soil is also important, consistency of the soil is also important. Design of earth retaining structures and underground structures. So if you are uh, traveling to the northern part of Pakistan, you will see lots of landslide and soil stability issues. So retaining walls or gravity retaining walls are constructed or built in order to hold the lateral forces which are exerted onto this retaining wall or in order to avoid the soil to come in blocking this road. A thorough knowledge of geotechnical engineering is essential to design gravity retaining walls, tunnels, underground buildings, etc. subjected to soil loadings. Design of embankments, excavations and canals also require the knowledge and understanding of the geotechnical engineering. When the surface of the soil structure is not horizontal, for example, if you are having embankment like this, sometimes you will see the failure, the slip surface will occur. If the load is applied onto the embankments. Similarly, the seepage characteristics are also important if you are designing canals. For the irrigation purpose. If you are doing excavation, you can clearly see that the braces are provided here in order to avoid the failure of this soil into this excavated area where the basements are being constructed. Now, deep excavation requires lateral braces, sheet pile walls to prevent caving in which is focus of the geotechnical engineering too. Now design of earth dams where we need to use certain type of material like for example clay is used to provide to avoid the seepage of the upstream water which is stored for various purposes and then blocks or gravels are used sands are used stones are used to give the overall stability to that earthen dam <coughs> so understanding the index properties density plasticity characteristics specific gravity particle size distribution and duration of the soil is important in designing the urban dams. Now after discussing the importance of geotechnical engineering, now we will move towards the famous geotechnical failures. Now if we ignore studying the engineering properties of soil, what could happen? It could significantly increase the time that we can lose the time as well because cleaning up this backfill material and the retaining wall material will take a lot of time and also it will have significant financial losses 
this could be occurring due to the increase in the lateral pressures exerted due to this backfill material, maybe due to the rainfall, maybe due to the clogging of those weep holes which are provided in the retaining wall. If you could do the proper geotechnical investigation and numerical analysis, you might have saved this retaining wall failure. In another case, you can see that the retaining wall has been failed due to the increased lateral pressures exerted onto the retaining wall. This could be due to the structural failure, this could be due to the lack of weep holes which are provided to encourage or enhance the drainage or the dissipation of the excess pore water pressure. Now these failures can be investigated if we get the soil parameters accurately in lab or in field and then we do numerical analysis using various softwares so we can assign the properties to the soil and assign the properties to the structure for example in this case it's retaining wall if we do proper analysis now in this case Plaxis 2D software or Plaxis 3D software can also be used GeoStudio or Slope W version can also be used for slope analysis here you can clearly see that lots of lanes have been blocked by this mountain and the whole mountain slided due to the weight of soil maybe due to significant rainfall okay and it can cause a lot of waste of time and waste of money as well or significant financial losses in another case this one occurred in Taiwan and the rocks rock slide occurred in North Carolina blocking the highway Again, if we perform proper geotechnical site investigation and numerical analysis, we can avoid such failures. Soil erosion can also occur and it can also significantly disrupt the transportation and communication between cities and countries. Flash floods can cause significant erosion under the bridge piers which can also challenge or jeopardize the structural integrity of the bridges soil liquefaction when soil is in static condition is having bearing capacity but what will happen if the earthquake occurs the saturated soil when they are shaken it develops significant pore water pressure which is U and the effective stresses which is total stress minus U so the total stress minus U which will be discussed in that part of this course or in Jota 2 so the effective stress reduces due to the increase in the pore water pressure and this will liquefy even though the structures are intact you can clearly see but due to the liquefaction of the soil the structure has fallen and you are unable to use that structure now so therefore your technical investigation or understanding 
and studying geotechnical engineering is important. Now, soil settlement, soil bearing capacity is important as well. And in Leaning Tower of Pisa case study in geotechnical engineering, this is the case study which is available on our YouTube channel as well. You can watch the detailed explanation which is provided here that how this leaning tower of Pisa started to tilt slowly and gradually. So you can clearly see the tilting of this tower and how the clay was stabilized. Shanghai, China in 2009, multi-story building, apartment building collapsed due to lateral forces or due to the excavation on the site. Sometimes sinkholes can occur, limestones can be dissolved in water, in heavy rainfall. And they can create holes beneath the surface and this soil will sink into this hole now I will show you a few videos in which you will see that if you avoid the lateral pressures or if you avoid the proper investigation or if you avoid providing proper lateral support to the soil we can have significant time losses and financial losses as well. Here we can see lateral support is provided but that is not sufficient to hold the backfill material and the whole area is again filled with the soil and we also lost one, two or three, four for five lanes of this highway. In another example, we can see here that significant pore water pressure has been generated. Although lateral supports are provided, but those lateral supports were not enough braces are also provided anchors are also provided but these braces are coming off due to the lateral forces or pressure exerted by the soil and significant losses of time and financial loss will occur just in a few seconds so therefore it is important to understand the lateral forces, the unit weights, the pore water pressures and you can see the excavation took a lot of time. Maybe someone was building a plaza there, maybe someone was building a house there and the house has also been damaged there. You can see on the left top corner of this video. Similarly sometimes it can cost your lives as well you can see here that people are excavating they are trying to construct foundation there but unfortunately the soil will fall down or maybe it can cost your lives as well Now if we do proper geotechnical investigation, if we do proper numerical analysis using various softwares which are available nowadays, we can avoid these failures. This is an example which occurred in Pakistan where someone was excavating on the left side here and this is a market here. maybe. 10 to 15 shops will vanish in 
few seconds. You can see the cracks there and the whole market will go down and will collapse. Now maybe electricity is also damaged, the excavation area has been filled with the market and the market is also gone so significant time and financial losses could occur if you avoid studying the, the technical engineering. There are a few typical to technical engineering questions which must be raised in our minds for example in a soil exploration program in a soil exploration program we need to investigate site condition but how many borings are necessary how deep how many samples we need to collect to know about the strength, compressibility and hydraulic conductivity of soil. What soil test will need to be performed? Whether we need to perform odometer test, we need to perform moisture content, we need to perform modified proctor test, we need to perform cone penetration test, whether we need to perform standard penetration test. So these are the questions which we need to ask ourselves. What is the stress? in the soil at a particular depth imposed by the superstructure or the fill load if we are designing an embankment can the soil carry this stress without a shear failure can this can the soil carry this stress without significant settlement how much settlement how long will it take for this particular settlement maybe one year maybe five years, maybe ten years, is the soil suitable for highway, railroad, dam, embankment, what is the effect of soil moisture change on the volume of the soil mass and can volume be controlled for payments for other structures including residential construction. Maybe we are going for is the soil good enough for 10 story building? Is the soil good enough for 20 story building? If it's not good, what kind of ground improvement techniques we need to use? Whether we need to reinforce the soil, whether we need to improve the soil. These are the questions which we need to ask as a geotechnical engineer. What is the rate of movement of the water? How the soil excess pore water pressure is dissipated? Will a dam built over this soil hold water because that's the prime objective of the dam? Is it a site is a site safe for radiation producing plant? Can settlements be controlled so that no leakage occurs? Is this area safe for structures? Or will an earthquake produce a disaster? Now an earthquake, how the earthquake will affect the buildings? built on a soil, dams, embankments, tunnels, retaining walls and other civil engineering structures. Therefore, geotechnical engineering is important and if you want to study more about the two technicals so you can visit these links for another case study on the Kansai airport which is built in offshore environment in Japan you can watch our YouTube channel a short video on the Kansai airport Osaka Japan thank you very much and I hope you're enjoying my videos please kindly like share and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you assalamu alaikum and allah hafiz